uh, someone asked about whether we were going to do an angel tree this year. And so uh, Faye graciously agreed to contact the Pelican Rapids school system and Frazee school system. And so those are things that they need in their, kind of like their, their store school store so when people need things um, so if you want to grab a tag and bring those back uh, next week we're not we're not worried about getting them there before Christmas so no rush um, but Faye don't wrap them yes so tape your tape your little card that you take from the tree tape it to your item don't bother wrapping them uh, it's not a Christmas drive, it's, it's just uh, general needs that the school finds that kids have. Um, so if you can help with that, that would be wonderful. And it is Ugly Sweater Sunday, if you remembered that. I see Neil has an especially ugly sweater on. Yes, with the fringy things, and Dave's is pretty great. You want to ring your bell, Dave? Oh, what what does it say? What does it say? Oh, okay. See, mine is Santa. I know him. And Pete said, maybe you need to explain that because isn't it Christ I know him? I said, that's what makes it an ugly sweater. It's not a sweater. It's just a t-shirt. I couldn't find a sweater, but I wish I had on the back, Jesus, I know him because that's more what it's about. when you first bought it. So, uh, but w it also is the Sunday that we pass out the pay it forward envelopes. Um, and if, if I get anything wrong, Faye, correct me, okay? But the pay it forward envelopes, we take our monthly mission offering for December and divide it up into five envelopes. So there's $50. Six, six envelopes. Six envelopes, sorry. Never asked me to do math. Um, six envelopes with $50 in each envelope. Um, did we figure out a way? We're, are we just going to ask for volunteers? Oh, there's numbers on the back of your bulletin. And if your number is drawn, then you get an envelope. And the idea is you take that $50 and you pay it forward somehow. So you can give it to uh, a charity that you want. You can give it to someone that you know is in need this Christmas. Um, I know someone gave it to a police officer last year to give to someone that he might encounter that would be in need. So um, what you do with it is, is up to you. Um, but it's just a way to pay the blessings that we've received forward. So if you look at the back of your bulletin, so if you have number one, through six, you get a pay it forward envelope. There's a red number on the back of, I just checked mine to make sure I didn't have one. One through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Well, does someone want to volunteer to take an envelope? Dave will take one. So however you want to pay that forward, you may do that. Right, we'd keep names private and things like that, so don't necessarily share names, but you can say you passed it on to in this kind of a situation or whatever it might be, and we'll share those next week. So looks like we got one, Pete, so we got to figure out how to pay it forward. Okay, great. Any other announcements or things that people want to share this morning? Yes, Beth. One of our generous congregations, someone from our congregation, bought some Barbies at the... Um, Oh, at the silent auction at the, at the, at the concert. silent auction thing at the concert last year, and I donated one of them to a young gal who will be very, very appreciative and probably oh. not get much more for Christmas. 
Wonderful. In the name of the church. So yes. Save that person. Yes. So that anonymous person, we thank you. We pass one of those Barbies forward to someone else that will enjoy them. So. Yes, Ted. Yes. Anybody oh. Anybody wants to come out and see the Christmas houses that I got set up? We got 300 of them. So, I'll be there from 1 till 7. So Ted has a huge holiday house display that he sets up, and he told me it's a 12-foot Santa. Is that outside or in your house? Outside. Outside. So if you need Ted's address, because um, I see we have some guests here today, if you want Ted's address, we can find that for you. So you can swing by his house and see all his light-up Christmas uh, houses. Yes, Tom. Those tags. I put a box down there so people can put everything in Oh, the box. you can put everything in the box there that you purchased from the angel tree. So, anything else? Yeah, Lana. And I had the privilege to go to Ted's last year, and you've never gone out to Ted's and see the, the enormous amount of houses and beautiful he has in his homes and his garage. You should do it. I mean, it's, it's well worth a five minute drive out of town. So. And I heard that it's wonderful. One to seven, he's going to be doing that today. Anything else? All right. Well, let's light our main candles, if we would, ushers. Good morning. I missed the ugly sweater announcement. So. Um, today's Advent reading, today we light the second Advent candle. The first candle reminded us of hope. The second candle is the candle of peace. The peace we seek in our hearts as we await the coming of Christ and peace to come on earth as announced by the angels. May the light of hope and peace burn brightly in your hearts each and every day. Please stand as you were able for hymn 2090, the Advent song, verse 2. for the call to worship. Please join me. Leader into the stillness of a Bethlehem night. Oops. Huh? Just into the stillness. Oh. <laughs> into the stillness of a Bethlehem night, God came. Into the silence of verdant pastures, God spoke. You sure I spoke God. The quietude of the past is broken by the crackle of weapons to the peace of the past. Restore us, O oh God. God came so the disenfranchised might find hope, 
the despairing might find safety. Restore us, O oh God. God came so that love might have, might, love might win over hatred and revenge, that we might be restored to the ways of peace by the Prince of Peace. Restore us, O oh God. Undeserving, we kneel at the manger. New life is ours for the asking. Restore us, O oh God. A grace beyond comprehension is given, the peace which passes all understanding. Restore us, O oh God. Please remain standing as you are able for him 202, People Look East. Did we get you some activity bags for them? Okay, can we get some activity bags from, for them so they don't get too bored? Because I know lots of talking is kind of boring, isn't it, when grown-ups are talking. We've got some bags that have some things you can do to keep yourselves busy during church. We're glad that you're here this morning with us. No, we forgot it. She started playing. All right, wonderful. So it's a time in our service when we share God moments that we've experienced over the past week and those things that we want to give joy, uh, God thanks and praise for, and those needs that need our prayers. So we'll start with God moments. Anyone have a God moment this week? Well, we had one yesterday was our Rudolph's Closet at Dent United Methodist Church. And um, I think due to the weather being a little cold, a little windy, and a little slippery out, we didn't have quite as many as we've had in the past. But we served um, over 80 kids, came and shopped. And uh, we had collected through going to rummage sales and getting new items, going to thrift stores, getting new items, buying new things. Um, we lucked out in the fact that the Pelican Rapids Family Dollar was closing. So they went and got a lot of things at 50% off. So we uh, gave away 500 gifts yesterday to those 80 children that were there. They were shopping for mom and dad, brothers and sisters, grandma and grandpas, cousins, friends, whoever they wanted to shop for, we let them shop for. And the smiles that were on their faces when they 
took those bags of gifts that we wrapped for them and everything, put wrap and tags on them, um, was just a joy to see. So it was certainly, I'd been looking forward to this for months because I think it's such a wonderful outreach um, that we do as, as the Dent Church and you guys are doing with the Angel Tree and the Pay It Forward. That's just how we reach out to our community and help those uh, that might be struggling a little bit. So that was a God moment for me. Anybody else? have anything that happened that felt like God was a part of? Yeah. Well, I, not, I don't know God, but we, we had a joy, I mean, we had a wonderful weekend this, this weekend. My son from Richardson came in, and this morning driving up from Fargo, we listened to Christmas music that just touched both of our hearts. Mm. This time of season, uh, it's just amazing. I just thank God for the relationship that I have with Christmas. Yes, yes. It, we are reminded of it when we hear uh, Life 97.9 is what I listen to, and they are playing all Christmas music. Most of it is uh, religious music, so you hear a lot of hymns, you hear a lot of new songs you might not have heard, and there are some uh, secular songs on there too, so it's not just um, all hymns, but it's a great station to listen to if you're wanting to not hear Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer or All I Want, for Christ uh, I want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. They don't play those kinds of songs. So you'll hear different versions of Silent Night, Away in a Manger, Hark the Herald, all those wonderful Christmas hymns. So, yeah, thank you for that. Anyone else have a God moment? All right. Anyone have a joy they want to celebrate today? Yes, Steph. Um, I got my tree decorated, and it's always a joy because I have ornaments back to my first year that I had left home. Mm. So you, you go through and I have the ones where, the plastic ones where the kids, you didn't put glass ones on our tree. Right. <laughs> ones that we had made. So just and looking at all those memories and everything as you decorated your tree. Kind of looking back at your life. Yeah, so of all, all the blessings life. in your life. Yeah. Thank you, Steph. So decorating the tree and looking at decorations she's had since she moved out of her family home and just all the the love and memories caught up with that. Other joys or things to celebrate? Don? On Thursday, we're headed to Indianapolis to our other sons for Christmas. Okay. So you traveling mercies and just a good time there. All right. Anybody else traveling anytime soon? Okay. Marty, you have something. Well, um, we um, prayed in Bible study for Mikey, who's um, my granddaughter's fiance's friend. And his surgery went really well. Oh, and good. So it's worth the All right, wonderful. So uh, Mikey had to have open heart surgery this week, and everything went well. So we give thanks to God for that. Anything else to give God thanks and praise for today? All right, how about where are the needs? Who can we pray for? Donna. She is, we got a call this morning, a good friend of ours over in Wisconsin that uh, we get together with at Christmas time and summertime. Uh, he's been struggling with cancer for several years and uh, found out that he's back in the hospital Okay. Again, this week. All right. Do you want to say his name or keep it anonymous? Sam. Sam. <coughs> you want to pray for Sam, who's been dealing with cancer for many years and is back in the hospital. Good friend of Donna and Neil's. Who? Yeah. Um, pray for Cliff's family. His mom is under hospice. Um, she's got. She has good days and she has bad days, but we were told that it's any time. Okay, and that's Norma? Right? Norma. Mm -hmm. So we want to pray for Norma Mo, who's in hospice care and will be going to join Jesus soon. Thanks for lifting that up. Yes? Uh, kind of an update on Bruce. Yes. Um, he is home. Uh, they still have no answers for them as regards to what happened. We do know it wasn't a stroke and it had nothing to do with his heart. 
but they implanted a monitor so they could keep tabs on him. So okay. when he gets one of these episodes, maybe they can find an answer. Okay, so they said it wasn't a stroke? No, it wasn't oh, a stroke. Oh, okay. So they just don't know what the... They're not sure what exactly so happened. So first for answers. Yeah. So Bruce, who's recovering from some kind of episode that they're not sure what it is, so prayers for wisdom and discernment on the medical team to figure out what's going on there. I would ask that you'd pray for my daughter-in-law, uh, Yona. She uh, sent me a text yesterday asking me to pray for her uncle, who was found uh, without a heartbeat. They took him to the ER, tried to revive him, but that was unsuccessful. So her... Um, uncle who's named Tom passed away yesterday. So just prayers for his family in a time of grief. Anyone else we can pray for this morning? All right, well, let's go to God in a time of prayer, and I'll invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer at the end of my prayer. Most gracious God, we are on the road to Bethlehem and we come with gratitude that you are ever with us as we journey. Help us as we travel to stay on the path and keep us focused on the purpose of our mission. We confess that in the busyness of this season, we can stray from the holy day and concentrate instead on the holiday. So we would ask that you guide our steps and give us in our hearts the reason for this season. As we put up our Christmas lights, might we be reminded of your light. Grant us the patience to pause in our task and bask in the promise of the star we follow. As we trim our trees, let us take time to share the treasured memories of family gatherings so that it is your love that decorates our homes. As we shop for gifts, keep us mindful of the birthday we celebrate and the gift that we are given in the Christ child in the manger. When we bake cookies and make candy, let us stir in to the ingredients forgiveness, serenity, peace, joy, and love, so that our presence reflect the gift of your presence. We are bound for Bethlehem, O oh God. We, meet, we each must answer as to whether there is room inside the inn of our hearts for your son Jesus. Grant that it may be so. We thank you for the success of Rudolph's Closet yesterday, for the gift of Christmas music and Christmas hymns that remind us of the reason for this season. We thank you that decorating our trees and taking out ornaments bring back wonderful memories of family and love times together. We pray for Neil and Donna who will be traveling later this week that you would grant them traveling mercies and a wonderful time with their son in Indianapolis. We give thanks that Mikey's open heart surgery went so well, and we ask you to continue to keep your healing hands upon him. And Lord, we lift before you people that need you in their lives. Sam, who's dealing with cancer and back in the hospital. Norma, who's in hospice care and will soon be with you. Bruce, who's recovering from a mystery illness. We pray for his team to be directed by you as to what is going on with his health. And we pray for the family of Tom in their grieving his passing. We pray all these things in the name of the one whom the wises still seek, the baby, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 206 in your big book, um, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
invite you now to the time of giving of our tithes and offerings. Hear this prayer. May the gift of grace, which has been so lavishly given to us, touch our hearts as we give of our gifts of time, resources, talents, and money. May the needs of others become our needs, their poverty, our poverty, their hunger, our hunger, their longings for a better life, our longings. As we feel, so may we give, always in gratitude for the abundance of unconditional love that is ours through the gift of the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our prayer of illumination. Creator God, as we come to your word today, give us fresh insight. We invite your Holy Spirit to come guide us as we read, listen, and respond to your truths. The word of God is a gift, and we thank you for revealing yourself to us through it. May we leave here charged, changed because we have experienced the power of your word today. Amen. And our scripture reading is from Psalm 85. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardon all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, and he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'm continuing the sermon series on the four Advent candles using resources from the Psalms. So as we said, as we were lighting the candles, today we lit the candle of peace. So imagine, if you will, a Hollywood studio lamp right out of the 1940s, the kind of lamp they used to light movies, or an aviator wing desk inspired by a World War II fighter plane or maybe an eight-foot-tall architectural model of the Eiffel Tower, 
or something a little smaller, a space pen that works upside down and also will write underwater. Are any of those gifts on your Christmas list this year? Probably not, but if so, Santa's gonna have to visit a place called Restoration Hardware. This high-end store is where people go when they want to step back in time and buy an item that reminds them of some golden age from the past. Paris in the 1880s, Hollywood in the 1940s, the space race of the 1960s. We can look back with longing, feeling that something precious has been lost. They want a missing treasure to be restored. And sometimes, so do we. Now maybe we don't feel that kind of a void that can be filled by a Hollywood floor lamp crafted of solid aluminum and steel retailing at about $2,000. One lamp, $2,000, must be a good one, but does it give us the light in our life that we need? Because darkness, and I mean inner darkness that we sometimes all experience, is not going to be eliminated by a Hollywood lamp designed to illuminate the faces of classic film stars. Wandering through sometimes the dark times of our daily life, we can stumble and fall, hurt ourselves or hurt others, we can crash into obstacles and leave a trail of debris behind us. We long for a lantern or a light that will light our path, a beacon to guide us and lead us home. And so at Christmas time in Advent, the church lights candles, an Advent candle. This is done the first Sunday of the Advent season and again on the second and the third and then we will light the final candle on Christmas Eve along with the Christ candle in the center. Each Sunday we light another candle and our litany has the words, or our call to worship has the stores, the words, restore us, O oh God. Restore us. Make us what we were. Make us what we long to be. Make us what you've created us to be because we know we need restoration at times. We know we're not always what we could be, but we don't need restoration hardware, a store, as great a store as it might be. So last week we focused on the restoration of hope. Today's topic is the restoration of peace. So Psalm 85 that uh, Bev just read begins with a line that was spoken by the people of Israel back in their homeland after they had spent many years in exile in Babylon. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. And remember the um, Israelites traced their heritage back to Jacob, who was fathered by Isaac, who was fathered by Abraham. And it continues, the people are thankful they're grateful to God that this time of captivity and exile is over because God has forgiven their iniquity and pardoned all their sin. So we hear that word iniquity, and a lot of times we don't know what that means, but we understand the word sin. It's all those things that we mess up on or we fail, and we know we've let God down. But God has forgiven all of that in our lives. But even so, something's still missing. They still feel an emptiness, the Israelites. And it might be very similar to the void that remains sometimes deep within us after a big event. We earn a degree, we get a new job, we move into a bigger house, or drive a new car off the lot. We understand how fortunate we are. We appreciate God's favor toward us but we wonder why all these things that we wanted and now have still don't feel like enough. We wonder why good fortune in this life gives us everything but a sense of peace. St. Augustine had it right when he said, talking about God, you, meaning God, have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So true peace is going to escape us until our restless hearts begin to rest in God. Serenity 
can't be granted by a diploma, a promotion, a McMansion, or the latest luxury car. Peace comes to us as a gift from God, and it includes forgiveness of sin and the restoration, the restoring of our relationship with God. So it's like a package of peace that we receive from God. And an artist named Franck de la Mercedes took the idea of a package filled with peace literally. He mails small boxes with abstract designs on the outside to anyone anywhere in the world for free. And pasted next to the address label is a label that reads, fragile, handle with care, contains peace. Frank says that we expect something of value to come in a box, like a shirt or a book or the latest video game or a toy that we're especially wanting. And especially at Christmas time, when we see those boxes under the tree, we know there are good things in there. But his boxes are empty of everything except a message that you can't buy at a store. It has no price. It's just a piece of paper with one word on it. That word might be love, it might be hope, it might be peace. So since 2006, the artist and his wife have mailed more than 15,000 of these peace boxes to people all around the world. And all he asks is that recipients send him an email or a text with photos of themselves with the boxes. His hope is that people who receive his boxes will devote some thought and then hopefully engage in conversation with someone else about these intangibles such as love, hope, and peace. And the idea has now spread to schools and churches that are making their own boxes and sending them out. But when God sends us a peace package, it's never empty. Psalm 85 tells us that the Lord God will speak peace to his people and will call for them to respond by turning to him in their hearts. God's salvation is sent out into the land and is received by those who fear him. Now, I never like that word fear in the Bible. It doesn't mean we're supposed to be afraid of God. It means to hold God with reverence and awe. So it's not, ooh, God is going to get me or anything like that. It's that God is not us. God is something other than us. We oftentimes think we're God and we act like we're God, but we're not God. God is something to be in awe of. So God is generous with these gifts of peace and salvation. But God requires a response from us. The only way we benefit from this gift is to receive it by turning to God in our hearts and offering the respect and the awe that God deserves. So we have the option of accepting the package or stamping return to sender and leave it unopened. That's a gracious God. God doesn't force us to accept the gift of salvation or forgiveness, but it's offered to us every day, all the time. And when we choose to open it, a precious collection of treasures spill out. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, says the psalm. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. It's kind of strange to think about words or ideas kissing each other, but it means they're going to come back together. And faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. So God's peace package contains a lot more than what meets the eye. Packed into this box is the entire character of God, what God is all about, steadfast love, faithfulness, righteousness, peace, and goodness. All of these qualities are intertwined and mutually supportive. Since love is connected closely to faithfulness and true peace is always dependent upon the presence of justice and righteousness, just as it would be absurd for someone to say that they love their husband or wife or spouse while at the same time being actively unfaithful to that person, it's impossible for peace to exist in a community that's marked by injustice and unrighteousness. 
As one American leader said in the mid-20th century, peace and justice are two sides of the same coin. The speaker was not a peace activist or an anti-establishment radical. Anyone who want to take a guess who said that? Peace and justice are two sides of the same coin. Who do you think maybe said that? Well, that would be a good one. That would be a good guess. It was actually Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star general in the US Army and 34th president of the United States. Peace and justice are the same sides, are two sides of the same coin in the world as we know it, and in the peace package that comes to us from God. So when we open this package, when we tear into it, like we sometimes do on Christmas morning or Christmas Eve, depending on your traditions, we find the gift of God's own self. Through an act of divine self-giving, God enters deeply into our lives through Jesus Christ, so that our hearts no longer have to be restless, but instead can find their rest and peace in God. A priceless treasure is placed before us, one that makes it possible, as the psalm says, for God's glory to dwell in our land. And I think we need this gift more than ever now because we're not going to find peace by shopping at Restoration Hardware or Walmart or Target or even the little shops in Purim, Vergas, and Dent. Even if we could afford those expensive things at an expensive store, Advanced degrees, well-paying jobs, bigger houses, fancy cars remain out of reach for many Americans. But even in tough economic times, God gives us the gift of non-material wealth, the gifts of love and faithfulness, righteousness, peace, and goodness. Non-material wealth, something that can be hard to think about, a bit of a mind-bender, not the kind of riches that we normally pursue. But such treasures are always available, especially to those of us who turn to God in our hearts. The gifts of the Lord continue to come into the middle of human life, most clearly through the birth of Jesus. So we don't really need Hollywood lamps or space pens or aviator wing desks or eight-foot-tall models of the Eiffel Tower. The treasure that needs restoration, I think, in our world today is the gift of Christ at Christmas, a gift we can receive with gratitude and delight because it's through the birth of Jesus that God's people, that God speaks peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. And then in the life and ministry of Jesus, that we see those qualities of steadfast love and faithfulness that they meet, and righteousness and peace come together and kiss each other. So in this season of Advent, of preparation, preparing ourselves for the coming of Christ once again into our lives, we could respond to that gift by sending out a peace package of our own. At a time when Christmas packages are filled with everything but peace, you could reclaim some of the missing treasures of this season. So what could it mean to send a peace package? Well, what if you extended steadfast love to a teenager who's rebelling with every ounce of his energy? Or reaching out to someone that's not all that lovable. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a neighbor that you've been on the outs with. Practice faithfulness in your marriage and make an effort to express appreciation for your spouse to tell them what it is that you love about them. Sometimes when we've been in a marriage for a long time, we forget to say those kinds of things to one another. Show righteousness in your workplace by being honest and fair in all of your activities. Work for peace in your relationships, looking for ways to reduce tensions and increase harmony instead of picking fights. If you know that someone doesn't like talking politics, well, don't bring up politics at the Christmas table, right? Or don't spread gossip about other people. Because if we invest in these, as much in these packages as in our holiday gifts that we're purchasing online or from a store, I think this could turn out to be one of your best Christmases ever. So restore us, O oh God. Give us the gift of your peace so that we can share it with others. Alleluia.
Amen. Our sermon hymn is What Child Is This? Number 219 in your book. and benediction. In our Lord's peaceful kingdom, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the little child shall be with With hearts hungry for this vision of harmony. Let us put faith in the child of Bethlehem and follow him into the way of peace. Amen. Blessed week.